Bokatov Khabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very tense situation in North Korea as we were getting up this morning. Uh, seeing here on RT News that uh, North Korea has uh, a failed uh, missile, a Scud, a new type of Scud. That Scud happens to be, according to what Fox News is reporting, uh, a KN-17. It's a new type of Scud, uh, U.S. officials tell Fox. It's the one that we've seen there in the parade. Russia also calling it the KN-17. But what we are reporting is that was it a failed attempt or did Russia actually shoot this Scud missile out of the sky? Going to blow you away what I'm about to share with you right here, but we already see RT says North Korea ballistic missile fails minutes after launch. South Korean and U.S. militaries are stating this. Pyongyang has test fired a ballistic missile that appears to have exploded within minutes after launch and never actually left North Korean airspace, according to the U.S. Pacific Command and South Korean Joint Chiefs of Staff. Now, you have to ask yourself the question, is that what happened or did Russia actually shoot this missile out of the sky? You might think that's a bit uh, a far-fetched situation, but maybe Russia is actually playing a good neighbor a bit more than what people think. As we've stated to you before, Russia and China both have sent their militaries down to the border there with Russia. As you can see in this image here on Already Happened, the website there, Already Happened uh, hyphen uh, dot com. They're reporting here on several occasions the movement of tanks going down to the uh, border there with North Korea as well as the Bulk Elm 3 class uh, anti-missile system that was sent over there as well. These are used for knocking out things such as Scud missiles or Tomahawk cruise missiles. And we've reported the entire time that Russia and China may be there to defend North Korea. Although I do believe that something must be done about Kim Jong-un's nuclear program. And if it takes the U.S. taking it out, I definitely can understand why President Trump would do so. But the question remains, though, is that China and Russia really is wanting to go more by using a diplomatic means and seem to have uh, made a posture of willing to defend North Korea. But now it's beginning to look like that maybe what Russia is doing also is taking it a step further trying to avert a nuclear war that would turn into a world war. As we stated in our news broadcast yesterday, China has made it very clear, Russia has made it very clear that if the United States strikes uh, at North Korea's nuclear uh, uh, power, uh, excuse me, their, 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 their bomb making facilities, their nuclear power plant pans, their reactors, all the things that they would actually target, that this could end up spiraling, as they call it, spiraling out of control. Why? Because they would begin to also try to stop the Scud missiles from coming in. They would shoot them down. And, uh, or I shouldn't say Scud, but the Tomahawk cruise missiles. And if the U.S. sees that uh, Russia and China is interfering, then they may actually turn on Russia and China. This is how this could spiral out of control. Because you have to understand, if the United States is just there to take out Kim Jong-un's nuclear capabilities, then how could it spiral out of control? Okay, if Kim Jong-un gets one nuke off and they're able to stop it, or let's say it does land in Japan or Seoul, South Korea, how would that still spiral out of control? Because the United States would just hammer him that much harder unless China and Russia engage in the battle. That's what can turn it into a third world war. The U.S. and North Korea just going at it back and forth, tit for tat there, or engaging in a full-blown world war does not turn it into a World War III. But if Russia and China engage uh, with either, and, and it's not just North Korea, believe me, if all three of them gang up on North Korea, the guy is gone in within a minute. They're not there just to deal with North Korea. They're there to defend North Korea. But it's taking it a step further because I believe that what Russia is doing, Russia has actually upped the ante. I think that Russia shot down this new Scud missile because it didn't just blow up on the launch pad. This thing, as, as it was reported there on RT News, it didn't get out of the airspace of North Korea. That missile was on its way to whatever its target was, whether it was a test fire or whatever it may have been. It never left its airspace. 
but it was minutes into the making. So let's say that's two or three minutes. That missile's traveled a pretty doggone good distance. Do you think that maybe Russia using uh, that MK bulk MK system right there shot it down? Very good possibility. Especially when we look at the article right here, the Russian language on Litna this morning says the senators have announced the deployment of the anti-aircraft defense in the Far East. That's the title of this thing here. But let's look at it a step deeper. Let's look at what the bulk of this information is saying here. Now, I can share with you just Google to make it easier so I don't have to write down everything. You know, my wife read it, tell me what it says, but it's easier just to show you a Google Translate of it because it's still fairly accurate. The air defense system of Russia in the Far East in a state of increased combat readiness. On this, the RIA Novosti said the head of the Federation Council Committee on Defense and Security, Viktor Ozrov, Russia is extremely attentive to what is happening in the DPRK. We control the airspace in the zone of responsibility of the RF Air Forces, the senator said. Are you serious? Do you realize what he's saying? I mean, it's like a Paul Begley moment. What? I mean, come on. I, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm being a little facetious here, friends. But the senator is saying that we control that airspace. Russia shot that Scud missile down. And why did Russia do it? You know, so many people, they want to throw Russia under the bus and say Russia is the bad guy. I think that Russia is trying to do America a favor and the world a favor. They're trying to avert a nuclear war of the entire world. Russia, no doubt, has shot down the Scud missile of North Korea so that the United States does not engage. Watch what else he says. According to him, the Russian military are doing everything in their power to prevent accidental missiles from entering the territory in the event of an extra, extraordinary situation. Oh my gosh, do you understand? Uh, you know, this is not just the territory of Russia. Anyone's territory is what he is saying. He goes on. Azrov also noted that such actions by North Korea increase the danger of a military conflict, taking into account the location of U.S. ships in the Sea of Japan. At the same time, a member of the Federation Council expressed the hope that President of the United States, Donald Trump, will not celebrate the 100 days of his term as president by a blow on the DPRK. On fr Friday, April 28th, a North Korean ballistic missile was launched, which according to sources is related to the medium range missile class KN-17. The test, according to the preliminary data, was unsuccessful. Why? Well, as he stated to you already, we control that airspace. See? Russia is extremely attentive to what is happening in the DPRK. We control the airspace in the zone of responsibility of the Russian forces, air force controls, the senator says. RF is for the Russian forces, the RAF actually. All right, according to him, the Russian military are doing everything in their power to prevent accidental missiles from entering the territory in the event of an extraordinary situation. Now, he's implying coming into Russia, but if he tells you they're controlling the airspace, that tells me there is a great chance. And again, it is a conjecture here. It's not saying with absolute certainty, but from what the senator is saying here, Senator Ozrov, it appears to be that Russia may have very well taken out, taken out that system. And on top of it, Russia is not playing around. Russia moving their S-300, S-400 system in because they see that North Korea is, pardon the expression, but hell-bent on firing out these missiles and starting a war with the United States. And so they've also got to protect mainland Russia. They're controlling the airspace, but if it gets out of control, they got to make sure because if they go to begin to, if they gets to, if it shifts from being a good neighbor and trying to avert World War III, then they got to take into account that the next thing that's going to happen is the U.S. is going to retaliate. Russia is going to have to defend themselves as well as North Korea because, you know, I say, I don't say defend them. I shouldn't really say defend themselves from the United States. I don't think the United States is looking to start a war with Russia in that regards there. But you have to keep in mind, if the United States sees that Russia is going to start shooting down their missiles, then yes, they're going to have to defend themselves as well because it will turn into a bigger war. 
without a doubt. And by the way, the F-35s, they have made their debut in Eastern Europe. They are on Russia's doorstep. The stealth uh, fighters that are there, uh, powerful machines there. It is the latest of technology that has been put on Russia's doorstep. Do not think that the United States is not ready and prepared that they may be dealing with Russia at the same time. More U.S. forces are being deployed to Afghanistan as well. Another concerning situation, no doubt, but you cannot help but wonder if there's not a bigger plan in the play, not by President Trump, don't believe President Trump is in for all these things, but by the deep state, by the shadow government that is ran by the industrial military complex that wants to make some billions of dollars, uh, you know, not to, not to pay off the national debt, no, not to pay off the national debt, that's only to line their pockets while they all move to the Middle East somewhere after they blow everything up. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live, just a short take of our broadcast this morning. Shalom.